after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending immense greetings and salutations upon the final Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Continuing our journey with Tafsir al Amma, we find coming to today's surah is no exception with the same theme of speaking about Al Jannah wa Nar, about paradise and hellfire, and the punishment that we give given to those individuals who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward and the bliss for those individuals who obey him in this world subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the concept of being happy or sad is a theme that runs throughout this juz or runs throughout the Qur'an of the two types of fariqain, the two groups of individuals, fariqun fil jannah wa fariqun fil sa'ir, a group of people, a party of people that will be inside as sa'ir, which is mean amongst asma'i jahannam, the names of jahannam, and a fariq that will be inside jannah. That theme continues inside this surah, and likewise a the theme of the last day. Actually inside this juz that we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes four references towards the last day. Whether it be al-tamma, al-sakha, and the surah al-ghashia and al-qari'ah. As the ulama mentioned, when something is repeated inside the Qur'an, tadullu al ahmiya It shows something very, very important. When different words and derivatives are used inside the Qur'an, that highlights even more emphasis that the person should begin to focus about what is this last day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about. In other words, what is or what should be our preparation? As this surah begins by mentioning, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ الْغَاشِيَةِ has not the news come to you about al ghashia the overwhelming event? And before we enter this surah, we find that it should be understood that many of us, that we approach the Qur'an, you know, being able to understand the language of the Qur'an, or the scene of the Qur'an, that certain things are depicted inside the Qur'an of punishment and torture, and how people who are burning inside hell will be given food and drink, or how people will be living and dying at the same time inside Jahannam, or how there will be mass amount of reward and bliss inside paradise. These are questions that sometimes as human beings we try to comprehend and try to understand. And there's a golden rule about the Qur'an, about Al-Akhirah, and the Asma, that the names are exactly the same, the same inside this dunya and inside Al-Akhirah. وَلَكِنْ أَمُورْ تَخْتَلِفْ but the affairs and the condition of these things inside Al-Akhirah are going to be totally beyond our comprehension. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside Hadith Qudsi, أَعْدَدْتُ لِعِبَادِ مَا لَا أَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَى قَلْبِ بَشَرْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for his believers, his servants, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and that comprehension, that feeling, that thought, that perception, has come across no heart or mind of any individual, any human being. This is the first thing we need to understand about the Qur'an because when people begin to drift away that this punishment, this severe punishment, it can't be true. How can fire burn at the same time, at the same time give nourishment, give food and drink inside the fire, inside Jahannam? How can we rejoice with so many good things inside Al-Akhirah? Let us live for this world. Let us rejoice in this world. Leave these affairs of an akhirah And we need to remove this perception from our mind. And likewise, another psychological understanding that all of us human beings that we have is there's ta'ab, there's fatigue, there's rules, there's regulations, there's difficulties, there's hardships in this dunya. No one doubts that. And no Muslim should ever doubt that. That is what this dunya is. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Created man in a state of difficulty, turmoil, hardships. Hardship after hardship, whether it be the mother bearing the child. Qurhan, in a state of difficult. Wahnan, state of weakness, deficiency, da'af. And as the journey of the human being it continu continues in this world, you find all sorts of responsibilities and difficulties begin to take place upon this earth. وَلَقَدْ سُئِلَ Imam Ahmad rahmatullahi alayhi is Imam Ahmad is asked, either by his son or other his students around him, when, when will you rest? 
And likewise, his attribute Imam Shafi'i as well. When will we rest? When will there be rest for the believer? The rest will be the first footstep inside the grave. لِأَنَّ الْقَبْرِ أَوَّلْ مَنْزِلْ مِنْ مَنَازِلِ الْآخِرَةِ the grave is the first station amongst the stations of al akhirah If you're successful inside the grave, then there's Jannah for you. Don't think so far away. The beginning is the grave. The grave will either be Niran min nari al-akhirah min nari jahannam. will either be a fire from amongst the fires of Jahannam or will be a road a garden from amongst the gardens of paradise. That's how close we are in a hadith in Sahih Muslim. Each one of us is close to Jannah like our right shoelace or right foot. And each of us is close to Jahannam like our left foot or our left shoelace. That's how each one of us is close to either one of these two elements. One of these final destinations. So obviously some of us, as, as human beings, we begin to get worried. That these rules and regulations, as salah Al-Hajj, Al-Umrah, Al-Zakah, Al-Siyam Stay away from Haram, Munkarat, Shahwat, Desires, Temptations Pray in the cold, wake up for Fajr, pray in the late evening for Isha, in the summer All, all of this is ta'ab, is fatigue, is hardship But then comes the psychological breaking of this inside the Quran This is for this dunya وَلَيْسَ فِي الْجَنَّةِ تَعْبٌ وَلَا نَسَبٌ In Jannah there will be no fatigue. There will be no tiredness, no rules and regulations. And some people, they ask, not to belittle them, but people ask such questions that will, will there be salah inside Jannah? Will we pray inside Jannah? Will we fast inside Jannah? هَذِي amur لِلْدُنْيَا these are the things of the dunya that you have to do it in this world. There's going to be no codification of the prayer inside Al-Jannah. And likewise inside the Quran, when there's ayat of zajr and adab and iqab, they make a person fear. Should make a person with the make a person fear about the days of Allah, meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ تُوَفَّ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ آخر الآية في القرآن The final verse inside the Quran is Imam Suyuti mentioned Al-Itqan fi Ulum Al-Quran Two volumes وَجَمْهُورُ الْعُلَمَاءِ الْقُرْآن وَعُلُومُ الْقُرْآن Say this is the final verse inside the Quran Sent down to the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam Inside Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 281. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Fear that day whereby you're going to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No individual will be oppressed and everyone will be given a due reward on that day. That is the preparation for the believing individuals that we need to make. And even inside all these fearful ayat that we find, in general, if you study the Qur'an, the, the ayat of paradise, they begin to go into far more a descriptive nature about paradise and about reward. So the, so the believer can sway towards the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That can ignite the iman inside the individual, at the same time make the person fearful, but at the same time give that condition inside their mind that there is going to be immense reward for that nasab, for that ta'ab, for that difficulty in this world that I control myself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite mercy and justice and rahmah is going to give me far more beyond than these meagerly actions that I've been told to carry out on the face of this earth. So that's at times we should focus upon, upon ayat. Al-Jannah is inside, inside this surah that we find. A few ayat speak about the punishment. Then a good few ayat begin to speak about the reward and the blessings. For what purpose to encourage us? Read Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah's Qasida to Nuniya. Thousands of lines of poetry which every single verse, every single line ends with Harf Nun. That's why it's given the name of Nuniya. 
Inside you find some five, six hundred lines speak about wasful Jannah. Speaking about the descriptive nature about Jannah. Read these lines of poetry, which is extracted from the Quran and Sunnah. For what purpose? It's a book speaking about aqa'id, about firqatul najiyah, about belief. Because some of us, just life just becomes theology, dogma, rhetoric. Give the, the awam, the masses of people, give them enlightenment. Give them the nur at the end of the tunnel. There's going to be Jannah. There's going to be paradise. There's going to be reward. There's going to be bliss. There's going to be eternal life. You're going to be young forever. Rejoice. This is what people want to hear. This is what people want to strive for, to awaken themselves. That's what the Quran does. It awakens the qaloob, awakens the hearts, the minds of the average masses. To make, that's why you find that sometimes the masses of the average people, they have a stronger rahba than many of us. They have a stronger desire for paradise than many of us. Because our life just becomes rhetoric. It becomes reading. It becomes tertiary evidences. You find an average individual, ما يترك sunan. An average individual doesn't leave his 12 raka'at of sunnah in a day. For what reason? Because he knows, وَلَهُ بَيْتٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ Because he knows there's a house in paradise. وَيَسْتَمِرْ وَيَحْفَظْ عَلَيْهَا عَلَيْهِنَّ And he guards and he preserves these sunan throughout his day, throughout his life. Why? Because he has this yaqeen inside his heart that I will be given this. While we begin to drift away in all types of debates and discussions inside our life, those average people are focused in the end journey. They're focused in the end journey. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them the end journey. وَلَا يَظْلَمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا your Lord does not oppress anyone. Whoever does good deeds, whether they be male or female, فَلَا نُحْيِيَنَّوْ حَيَاتًا طَيِّبًا We will give them a good life. A good life of peace, tranquility, serenity within their own souls. That's why, وَقَدْ نُقِلَ عَنْ الشَّيْخُ الْسَبْيُ تَيْمِيَةً مَنْ لَمْ يَدْخُلْ جَنَّةَ الدُّنْيَا لَمْ يَدْخُلْ جَنَّةَ الْآخِرَةً Whoever doesn't enter Jannah of this world will never enter the Jannah of Al-Akhirah. Bi-ayyi What does that mean? There's no Jannah in this world but a Jannah of peace, tranquility, contentment, happy with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wants to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the Jannah of this dunya that we, we should be searching for. To find that inside our lives. And that's this surah that the Prophet alayhi salatu salam we mentioned, recite this surah inside the two Eids in Yawm al Jum'ah as well, with Surah Al A'la. Hal ataka hadith al Ghashiyah. Al Ghashiyah, as ulama have described, Imam Shanqi decided to see, discuss it's not just Al Ghashiyah, means the overwhelming event of a punishment. Because Al Ghashiyah can also carry the meaning of overwhelming them of goodness. Of blessings, as this surah points out, that there's going to be hardship for the people of Jahannam, and it's also going to be an overwhelming event of goodness for the people of paradise will be given to them. So this is these this is one of those kalimat that carries both meanings. That is not just punishment, there's also going to be good things and overwhelming encouragement that we given to believers inside Al Akhirah. Al Ghashia, this overwhelming event. From the names of Yawm Al-Qiyamah that we find. It's either one of the names the ulama mentioned about An-Nar, about Jahannam. It's actually the fire that we find. One of the names that some ulama have gone to that view. We find that one Ibn Kathir mentions in his tafsir. That a woman was reciting this surah. Hal ataka hadith al And the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he walked past and he heard her reciting this surah. Faqal na'am kad ja'ani. He said, yes, it has come to me. The news of al ghashiyah As Imam al Ibn al-Juzay al-Kalbi in Sadi Tafsir, an Andalusi scholar, he mentions, if, if the news hasn't come to you about al ghashiyah فَقَدْ أَتَاكَ الْآنِ 
that now it has come to you about al ghashiyah Hal bima'na qad bima'na al-tahqiq. Al-istifham that indeed it has come to you. The news about al ghashiyah Wa ma adraka al ghashiyah What will explain to you al ghashiyah is? Wujuhun yawma'idin khashi'ah. On that day, day, faces will be in a state in belittle. Say, in a state of focus. And ulama discuss this focus isn't khushu about inside this dunya. That's, you was expected to be in a state of khashi'an lillahi fi dunya. You're supposed to do it inside this dunya. But now in the, inside al-akhirah is a state of punishment. That now the person is going to be exposed to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person is degraded, debased belittled, has no value, will be standing there in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in front of this punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for this individual on that day. And there's even this concept, hell. The only other surah inside the Quran that Allah begins a surah with hell is surah al-insan. Hal ataka ala al-insani heenu min ad-dahri lam yakun shay'an mathkura. Wa hunaka sir. If you study surah al-ghash and surah al-insan, you find similarities between these two surahs. Only one or two verses that speak about Jahannam and in a long passage speaking about paradise. About the blessings of paradise. About the streams of paradise. About the young servants bringing the cups, the goblets, the ornaments towards the people of paradise. So there's a relationship between this surah al ghasha Al-Insan Whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins both of these surahs with this harf hal. That's why many of us, we don't study the Quran in great detail. Kullu kalima, kullu harf. Every single letter inside the Quran. Every single syntax inside the Quran. If it changes from fatha to kasra, it goes into a different meaning, a different dimension, a different understanding. We don't have this vision of the Qur'an. We don't have this relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a relationship that we need to develop inside our lives. Because Qur'an huwa kalamullahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an is a speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّرَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ We sent down the Qur'an for you to ponder and to reflect to explain it is the task of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. Does he find the ulama mention? Afdalul uloom is fahmul Qur'an. The best of knowledge is, is understanding the Qur'an because every single science flows from the Qur'an. Wahatta tawheed. Belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala flows from the Qur'an. The best book of Tawheed is Al-Qur'an. That's when people say, I don't want to read this book on Tawheed. Maybe this, maybe that. Tell him to just read the Qur'an. لِأَنَّ Quran كُلُّهُ Tawheed. Read the Qur'an. Read the ayat inside the Qur'an speaking about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not difficult to understand. It's not hard to understand. The parables, the similitudes, the likenesses that Allah leaves places inside the Qur'an of people who worship others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's all there inside the Qur'an. The rest of these works are all just taking from the Qur'an, trying to possibly make it easy for us to understand, or going to a deeper study for those who want to follow a more deeper path. But for the masses of, of the individual, just read the Qur'an. And how many of us since... This Ramadan gone past to now have read the Quran again in its completeness. How many of us have done that? How many of us sent us a, set us as a benchmark to do that inside our lives? Kullu shahr khatam every month to complete the Quran, or every two months, or every three months, or every six months, hatta kullu sana, or even once a year I, I complete the Quran from the beginning to the end. Or I listen to the Quran from the beginning to the end. We could spend hours on end of, of arguing and debating and listening to other things. If you listen to the Qur'an from the beginning to the end, it will only take you 24 hours. If you listen to someone, listen to one, one of the reciters recite the Qur'an, in 24 hours, you can hear the whole of the Qur'an. You know, some of us, that's what we do, we just waste our time. One, one of the Qur'an, he said he had a flight from here to, 
to New York or somewhere he was flying. He said, I had a few, a few hours, five, six hours, whatever it may be. وَقَدْ خَتَمْتُ الْقُرْآنِ كُلُّهُ In that journey, I read the whole Qur'an. Barakah for them inside their lives. Attachment to the Qur'an. Ahlul Qur'an, khasatuhu. People of Qur'an are, are close people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who try to decipher the Qur'an, live the Qur'an, implement the Qur'an, read the Qur'an, teach the Qur'an, live their lives with the Qur'an. That's what the Qur'an should do, it should build a link inside our hearts. This, this is the khalal, the emptiness inside my soul, inside my life. Is my attachment to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wujuhu yawma'idhin khashi'a Abu Bakr jazari inside his tafsir, he mentions, kinaya and ashabiha, people on that day, their faces will be wretched, will be upset on that day. And that's Allah begins with mashhad al-adhab qabla al-mashhad na'im. That's why Allah begins because al ghashi Allah begins with the punishment before the good things. Because why the beginning is speaking about al ghashiyah about the overwhelming event. Amilatun nasiba. They wasted their lives in this hard work, in this tab, in this fatigue. The opposite. As we mentioned, a believer has spent their life striving and struggling in this dunya for al-akhirah. But Allah now mentions inside al-akhirah, they're going to be they're, they're striving and struggling is being wasted. A whole discussion works at tafasir begins to take place. Who does it refer to? One view, Ibn Kathir, who mentions, going back to Ibn Abbas, is it refers to al-Nasara. They're tired and they're fatigued inside this dunya, worshipping others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Kathir and Imam Suyuti inside, inside the tafsir, respectively they mention that Umar al-Khattab, he sees a Christian man, a monk or a priest, he sees him in, in, in his robes and his fatigue and his, his ibadah. فَبَكَتْ رَحْمَةً عَلَيْهِ Began to weep for him in a state of mercy. وَقِيلَ لَهُ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنَّهُ نَصْرَانِي He's a disbelieving individual, a Christian. لِمَا تَبْكِي عَلَيْهِ Why are you weeping for him? He said, فَذَكَرْتُ قَوْلَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ تَعَالَى عَامِلَةٌ نَاصِبًا Striving hard, wasting their efforts. This individual wasted his life. Al-Ibra, the lesson for us, the many of us, we're laughing. Oh, look at the Christian belief. Look at their fallacy. Look at their falsehood. Look at this Christmas day. Look at this. Ya ayyu al-ikhwa. How many of us have made an effort to give them da'wah? It's not about mocking people. It's not about debating with people. وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنٌ It's not a performance. It's not a show. It's not a charade. It's not to belittle them. فَبَكَتْ رَحْمَةً عَلَيْ Umar wept for this Christian person. لِيَنَّ مَصِيرُهُ إِلَى النَّارِ He wept because he knows this person is heading towards the hellfire. رَحْمَةً عَلَيْهِ Mercy, where, where are we merciful towards kuffar around us, people around us? Where do we worry about them? What efforts do we make? When you debate with people of the book, debate with them in, in goodness. Except for whom? Illalladheena zhalamu minhum. Those who are oppressive. Those who are rude. Other than that, the key fact is always to be udu ila sabini rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idhati al-hasana wa jadilum billati hi ahsan. That's what we're supposed to be doing inside our lives. This is a great ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of us, let's not shy away from the fact. We came historically here. Why did our grandfathers come here? Why did our parents come here? We came here for the dunya. We didn't come here to give da'wah. We didn't come here to preach. Maybe Nadir and one in, in, a, in a million was sent to preach. The rest of us, our ancestry came here for wealth. For a better life. Hikmatullahi baligha. 40, 50 years later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turns it all around. We have a better life. We have a better education. We have better everything. Now what are we going to do here? What are we supposed to be doing here? Are we just supposed to be just sitting there and enjoying our lives? Are we supposed to be just amalgamate inside, infuse ourselves inside the society 
and just live within society. Kalla wa hasha. That's not the life of a Muslim. To infuse himself. To amalgamate himself within the society as well. The broader Muslims that they want. Just live within the society. And don't say anything. Don't preach anything. So that's you find, unfortunately, Allah guides some Muslims who believe that this day of Christmas, there's no harm to have a festive period, to have festive greetings, festive salutations, festive sittings. Kufr ala kufr billahi subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what it is. And rahmani walada. Read Surah Maryam. Tell our Christian friends to read Surah Maryam. There is no chapter inside the Bible called Surah Maryam, chapter Maryam. There's no chapter inside the Bible. Most Christians speak to them, they don't even know themselves what the Quran preaches about Christianity, about Islam, about Isa alayhi salam. Ask them a simple question. Most of them are left flabbergasted. Oh, the Quran speaks about Isa? The shame is on us. The shame is on us that the society at large does not know what Muslims believe in. What efforts have we made? Every time religion comes up, oh, let's not discuss religion. Let's not speak about al-akhirah. Let's not speak about death. Let's not speak about what Islam says. Or maybe I'm doing too much da'wah. You are supposed to be doing too much da'wah. You are supposed to be. You're supposed to be a da'wah machine. Even as a simple Muslim, Surah Al-Ikhlas is enough to fallacy, to fallify, fa- falsify Christianity. Just Surah Al-Ikhlas is enough. That's enough. Every Muslim, every child knows that Surah. Enough to just pose that question. What do you mean? There's a trinity, there's three gods, but yet one God. And they're all one, they're identical, they're all, they're all the same. Ay Haraj. Good preaching, good words. Shafaqah, Rahmah, questioning. Food for thought. No one wants instant results. Just leave them with that. Ponder over this. Have you read the Quran? Do you know what the Quran says? Have you offered the Quran? Have we given the Quran to our neighbor, to our friend? Have we done that? I don't think so. I don't think many of us have done that. Because why the society around us is infusing within us that religion is a personal matter. It's a personal affair. Or it is, leave these, leave these people, leave the kuffar alone. Leave them, let them go to hell. You know, maybe we could be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day of judgment. We could be asked. We could be asked that those people around us, the subjects around us, what did we do to help deliver the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards these individuals? And that's what Amir al-Mu'mineen was worried about. That he's worried that this individual is going to go, to, is going to go towards the fire, so something needs to be done. The other view that ulama that they mention is about people, Ahlul Bid'ah, innovation, who wasted their lives. That's why Bid'ah, innovation, isn't something people think is, is trivial. A long discussion begins to take place that people could waste their lives, waste their efforts inside al akhirah But the most conclusive view that Ibn Taymiyyah mentions, and he gives seven different evidences, that Amilatul Nasiba is fil akhirah Inside al akhirah there's going to be difficulty for these people. From Salasil, from the chains that are wrapped around them. The hardship inside Jahannam. That is, the people, they're going to be made to, to climb Su'ud. Su'ud is a slippery mountain inside Jahannam. So it's going to be ta'ab, it's going to be hard work for them inside Jahannam. So as you can imagine, a, 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 a tough prison whereby people are being chained and being worked. And they're already in state incarceration. وَلِلَّيْ مَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى Allah uses, وَالْأَغْلَالِ وَالْسَلَاسِلِ uses this terminology just to maybe depict it in our mind to a certain degree that people inside Jahannam are going to be exposed to hardship and difficulty inside Jahannam تَسْلَى آمِلَةُ النَّاصِبَ تَسْلَى نَارًا حَامِيَةً On top of this, these individuals are going to be given a severe punishment will be given to these individuals a fire intensified تُسْقَى مِنْ عَيْنٍ آنِيَةً and a river or springs of water, which ulama discuss of heat beyond any degree or Celsius will be given to these individuals. Some of them mentioned this, this, this spring has been boiling since the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth. Tasawwaru hadha, this boiling water will be given to these individuals. 
since Allah created the heavens and the earth has been boiling in preparation for his people inside Jahannam given to his individuals. يَتُوفُونَ بَيْنَا وَبَيْنَا حَمِيمٍ آن Allah mentions that Surah Rahman, they'll be going between hellfire here and there, traveling around, traversing around. Then they'll be given وَبَيْنَا حَمِيمٍ آن This boiling water will be given to these individuals. Inside Surah Al-Kahf وَإِن يَسْتَغِيثُوا يُغَاثُوا بِمَاءٍ كَالْمُهْلِ يَشْوِ الْوُجُوهُ when they ask for, for water, something to drink to quench their thirst, boiling oil will be given to them. And it will burn their faces. It will burn their faces, melt their faces away. This is, this is the drink. This is the water, Ahl Jahannam. The punishment is given to these individuals. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, لَيْسَ لَهُمْ تَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ ضَرِيعٍ they're going to have no food except for dhari. A long discussion begins to take place inside works of tafasir. That dhari was a plant known to the Quraysh, known to the Arabs. It had a wild smell, vulgar smell, an evil plant. This is a plant that we given to these individuals inside Jahannam. And this is, many ulama say this is shajar to zakum Inside surah to safat inside surah to dukhan Allah speaks about shajar to zakum as we began with, about how a tree will be inside Jahannam, will be nourishment for these individuals, given to these individuals. It will exist there. This is the, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This tree that you find, that is the top of it, the, the head of it, is like the, the head of shayateen, the heads of devils and evil plant, and evil food, and evil substance, substance be given to these individuals inside Jahannam that we find. وَلَا طَعَامٌ No food for these individuals إِلَّا مِنْ غِسْلِينَ The غِسْلِينَ that we find is, is the sweat, the pus, the intestines of the individual. That's what the individual, individual will be given to drink inside Jahannam. Imagine this. This evil punishment for, for people who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the strange thing about all this punishment is لَا يُسْمِنُ وَلَا يُغْنِي مِنْ جُوعٍ it doesn't take away their hunger. It doesn't nourish them. That's what Imam Sa'adi inside his tafsir mentioned. This is the main purpose of food. To take away your hunger and to nourish you, to strengthen you. But it won't happen. As we began, we don't think about Jahannam and Jannah like this dunya. It's something total separate what's going to take place on that day. How the punishment will be of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah mentioned wujuhun yawma'idin na'imah. Allah doesn't leave us in darkness. After a niqam, he mentions a ni'am. After hardships and difficulties and punishments, Allah mentions bliss, reward, paradise. Faces on that day will be radiant, they will be glowing, they will be rejoicing. They are going to be racing in a state of happiness. Because in this dunya, they were for stabiqul khayrat. In this dunya, they are racing for towards good things. وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَسَارِعُوا Race, compete with one another in this dunya to, for that jannah whose width is like, heaven, like the heavens and the earth prepared for the believing individuals same terminology different scenario different gathering different ending لِسَعْيِهَا رَاضِيَةٌ Racing for the bliss of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inside paradise. Fi jannatin aliyah. In lofty places inside paradise. So when you ask for paradise, ask for jannatul firdaus. You know, many people, miskeen, oh Allah, just give me jannah. Ida sa'alta Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask for firdaus al a'la. Ask for the highest place in paradise. Ask for that place, the highest place in paradise. That's not ba'id for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with dua. Oh Allah, if you want to give me this, of this, of this. La, anta muqin bid dua. Make dua that you are certain inside your heart that he will respond to me. Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb. عجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون. That's how believers should ask that you know that inside your heart you can feel it. 
You can feel it inside your heart. I'm calling, I'm imploring upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm calling upon you. I submit all of myself to you. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. La sharika lahu wa bithalika umirtu wa ana awalu muslimin I've submitted all my life, Ya Rabb. I submitted my young days when people were rejoicing, enjoying themselves. I controlled my lust, my desires for your sake, for that reward. Do not keep that away from me. That's why every person should keep moments of secrecy inside their life and secrecy of dua that they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I've I done this inside my life only for your sake. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to that. Will give that to that individual. Not just inside al-akhirah, peace and contentment. Will give that to the individual inside al-akhirah. The journey of paradise, it continues. Whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that tasma'u fiha la ghiyah. Whereby there will be no false, vulgar, bad speech or harmful speech. So ulama tafasir, once again, they mention that the hardships and difficulties of speech and vulgar, vulgarity around them that people may have to persevere inside this dunya or listen to or hear or comments, etc. These are all removed. They're all removed inside paradise. There will be no, no vulgarity. There will be no evil speech, no shatam or battle inside, inside paradise that created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا يسمعون فيها لغوا إلا سلاما No vulgar speech, no bad speech, no wasting of time إلا سلاما Except for peace. That's why you find that people of Jannah, even on this dunya, that you find, look at their speech, their etiquettes, their rhetoric, their words. It's always good speech. It's always khair. It's always praising Allah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People harm them, say things to them, say bad words, just brush it aside. These are all hasanat, good deeds that a person will accumulate. In fact, billati hi ahsan, a person doesn't respond. Evil with evil responds evil with goodness, with good akhlaq, good character, good behavior, good conduct. That's what the believer does. Because their vision isn't on this person. Their vision is amongst the sifat of people of paradise. Fiha aynun jariya. Rivers flowing, running springs for these individuals. Fiha sururun marfu'a. They'll be sitting on reclined, lifted couches. That's why some of the ulama, Imam Tabri inside his tafsir, he mentions the reason why they place wal ilmu in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon lifted couches so they can visualize. They can see Jannah around them. They can see the bounties. They can see the na'im. They can see the reward. So they, they, their station is lifted. Their maqam is lifted. Their, cla- their couches are lifted for them to visualize what's been given to them inside paradise. Waqwabun mawdu'a. And the cups are placed at, at hand's rest. Jannah is, is, is remarkable. That, that the person just stretches their hand and goblets of fine gold and drink is given to them. Rivers of water, of milk, of honey, pure wine. Person takes from these rivers as they want. Person eats and, and drinks as we find it once again in, inside the Qasaid of Nunia that we find description of paradise, of the food that we eat. Then we throw the bone, it returns back to its essence. You throw, the, throw the, the cork of the apple, it returns back to being an apple. Every bite, every bite has a different taste, different fragrance, a different leather, a different beauty. That, that is what we should be yearning for inside our lives to return to that good ending. That we find cushions set in rows. We find that rich carpets all spread around, all this brocade. These lavish things that, once again, as we began with psychology, we may see. We may see, look at these people, the world, what they rejoice, what they have, what they possess. Psychologically, we all think that as human beings. So Allah speaks our language at, look at al-akhirah. This is, this is all temporal world for these people. But in akhirah, there's going to be far more and beyond the comprehension we're given to the believing individuals. And that's, if that is not enough for us to reflect, then Allah begins to speak about his ayat. Four things he mentions. Long discussion begins to take place about the camels. Why camels specifically inside Surah Yasin, other places inside the Quran? Whenever it mentions an'am, ulama tafasir go to you, it means the camel. 
Safina to Sahra, the ship of the desert. This is the most beloved animal towards the Arabs at that moment in time. So they could relate to that. Why don't they see the camel the way that Allah subhanahu wa has created his camel? The service of the camel. The task of the camel. The only animal that can travel, traverse inside the desert for days on end without any water. Reflect upon this. أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبْلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِعَتْ أربع أشياء Four things which they could visualize in their lives. Reflect over this. Look at all of these elements around you just like us. Reflect about the dunya around us. The earth, the heavens, the stars. Everything around us should make us reflect. وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبْصِرُونَ Everything should make us reflect, even within ourselves, that there is only one. وَكُلُّ شَيْنْ تَدُلُّ أَنَّهُ وَاحِدٌ Every single thing points to the view that He is only one. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we find at the end of the surah begins to speak about لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُسَيْتِرٍ You're not one who is jabbar, musallit, qahir. You're not forced upon the people. But your task is only to, to convey to the people, remind them the message. Even though some of the ulama tafasid they mention this ayah is mansukha, that sometimes you need to give ayat al-zajr of warning people, awakening people. But sifatul amma, you're not one to force people. Lest alayhim bi musaytir. You're not one to force people, you're just to remind the people. Leave people, remind the people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who makes hisab of the people. And, we, and the final point, we as Muslims, we are living in a culture where we are so busy. We are so busy, worried about my comrade Muslim. Whether he's going to be a person of Jannah, a person of hellfire, on every single minuscule, minute thing about that individual. We just like to exploit it out of context. Who are we? Who are we to say? Who is a person of Jannah who is a person of Nar? This is only Sha'nullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't fall into this deception to just busy yourself that this person is going towards Jahannam. This person is going to be a person of Jahannam. And we find even such open speech at times when a person doesn't agree with you. We'll say that you're condemned to the hellfire. You're going to the hellfire anyway. I'm not speaking about a non Muslim. Even when non-Muslim is living, you should be careful about your words because he's still living. But towards another Muslim, to condemn another, another Muslim to the hellfire is not plausible. It's not acceptable. This is qillatul ilm, a lack of knowledge, a lack of perception, a, a, a perception of being full of oneself. Read Seer A'lamun Nubala, Imam Dhabi, some 20 odd volumes. Speaking about the classical people that existed before, read about their lives. They would fear that if there was one single person left, everybody's gone to Jannah. Everybody's gone to Jannah, there's one person left. And possibly that one person. And possibly that one person. That's what they would write, that's what they would comprehend, that's what they would think. Abu Bakr Sadiq mentioned, if I was only a strand of hair amongst the people of paradise, one strand of hair, I would be happy. Umar al-Khattab would say, that, would say the same thing. If there's one person left, I think I'm that one person who's not made it to Jannah. And these are people who've been guaranteed paradise. They are people who've been guaranteed paradise, yet they were so fearful. They were so worried inside their lives. Umar al-Khattab would sit there and you find that one of the companions heard him behind a wall saying Bakhin, Bakhin saying wretched, wretched I am if I don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Qala wa bayni wa baynahu jidar wa ma kana ya'rif anna annani khalf al-jidar Amir al-Mu'mini never knew that I would be on the other side of the wall but I heard him saying to himself questioning himself wretched you are Ya Umar Wretched you are. Fear Allah. Fear Allah. Inside your life. Taqwa Allah wa fissir. Fear of Allah is inside secrecy. Within oneself. In a solitude, confinement. So just being there between you and just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's when you question yourself. 
You question your life, you question your intention, you question every single thing about yourself. Just you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what a believer is. Whoever rectifies the affair with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the world will easily become rectified. It becomes easily rectified that every single one of us begin to question our own selves and our action and awaken ourselves. Allah will facilitate it. We'll make it easy. But because we become so over worried about other people, we lose vision of our own selves and our own relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the tawfiq and ability to rectify our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our iman, our dua, our adqar, our supplication, our salah, our siyam, our zakah, everything. Make it strengthen ourselves to bond ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of these calamities and difficulties that we're facing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kun fayakun al-amr bain al-kafi wa noon can lift it and remove it. And just as we began with psychologically, many of us to this day we still can't understand whether it's a conspiracy, whether it's this, whether it's that. Amongst this list of things that we have, let us place on this list because of the ma'asi was the noob on the face of this earth. The sins and the vice on the face of this earth, Allah has unleashed this upon us. Whether we believe it or we don't believe it, there is some difficulty on the face of this earth and it will continue. Especially if we don't repent back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even if there's a vaccine, there's a cure. Let the ultimate cure be inside our lives. The spiritual cure. Let the ultimate cure be deep down inside our hearts. It's a spiritual cure. We are sick to the core within ourselves. And if we don't awaken after all this suffering and difficulty and recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then only Allah knows what will awaken us. Only Allah knows what will awaken us. That after all these difficulties around us. So spiritually we need to have that cure within ourselves to awaken ourselves. And preach that inside society that we are spiritually sick and diseased individuals. And we need to spiritually cure ourselves. 